Well, I was planning on experimenting with some of this ochre and different pigments, and I finally got around to it today. I was cutting some slabs of rough cut lumber, and I have just the, uh, the useless end of one, so I thought I'd put some of this paint or pigment on, and then I'm going to let this dry and see how it behaves under weather and sun and but you know this is that that ochre the way it look you know it's interesting stuff because you can you can just crumble it up and mix it in like say this here is just that mixed in with linseed oil yeah it powders up this stuff powders up really well uh, it's kind of funny you start looking at the history of this stuff and it's just amazing you know this stuff has been used all over the world it's what the cavemen used mixing it with animal fats to paint some of the most famous cave paintings ever made you know it's it's fascinating really when you get into it it's a whole big science but it's very interesting, but from the historical vantage point, there's this stuff has been used. Like I say, this particular panel is the just the ochre and linseed oil. No, this is something that again goes back to the Vikings were using this, but it has been used all over Europe and uh, particularly in Scandinavia. I'm sure any place where you would find, you know, the natural ochre in this state. Uh, people picked up on it and started using it. But even, I know, uh, you know, like this is, like I say, is linseed oil, but there were whole villages, like fishing villages in Newfoundland. I saw pictures there where the the buildings were all painted with ochre, but there, rather than linseed oil, they were using seal oil or uh, some fish oil of some sort, anything just to uh, use this color, you know, and use that as to something to bind it. But it was commonly used. You know, and I always thought it was interesting because a lot of the old pictures you'll see of of stuff that was made a long time ago. It, there's two colors that they use very commonly is this red, though this stuff varies in shade a lot, you know, from the area that's in. It can be yellow, it could be a bright red, could be anything. But another color that was used real often was black. And one of the ways of making black was, this is called vine black, because what it is, it's grape vines you know, old dried up grapevines that are then turned into charcoal and ground down to make a black pigment. And that was commonly used. And that's what this panel here is. Uh, it looks a little rough because one of the things is this stuff works on rough wood. It's not for like sanded wood or planed wood. It's for rough wood. But I really need to get a better way of grinding. You know, like this, this ochre grinds up very finely, no problem. The charcoal is a little harder to get really fine. So like I say, this panel is just linseed oil and that vine charcoal. This is the vine charcoal put into pine tar. I wanted to see what kind of, you know, if it would darken the pine tar up. And it's kind of interesting because it doesn't darken the pine tar as much as it did the linseed oil. But I'm going to have to play with that some more, but I wanted to get samples on, on a piece of wood so I could try them. But this uh, I'm pretty impressed with. Uh, paints on very smoothly, but this one on the end, what I was working there was, it's that same ochre and pine tar, or ochre and linseed oil, but I also added in some turpentine and pine tar mix. And now that is slightly darker 
than what this stuff is, but then you have the addition of the pine tar in there, which would make it all the more durable. So I'm going to see, like I say, I'm going to leave these set out in the weather. But this stuff looks good to me, but like I say, if I can add in the pine tar. You know, it's funny. You know, it makes me always think, you know, there's a lot of this stuff that, that kind of gets forgotten, that used to be commonplace knowledge. And now we have new modern things that are supposed to be better. But I really think this is something you don't want to lose. Uh, Sometimes you might need to know this stuff again. But I like that. That's where, you know, the tradition of painting buildings and that red color, that's where it came from, from the ochre. And it's still used today, you know, in some of your high-class oil paints. That's what you're using. It's interesting, but it's a whole science. The more you get into it, and the more interesting it is, but it's just an endless thing. But in its most basic form, just ochre mixed with boiling seed oil was a commonly used paint. Bill, there are places where I saw where they were mixing things like milk and even flour mixed in to use it as a binder. You know, it's it's a whole interesting field of pigment mixing. That you know, it would be interesting to get into. And I, you know, it's the kind of thing that I'm going to give some of these to my sister and and see if she wants to play with them. But in a, let's see, a, an elementary school art class. You know, I'm sure back in the days. When, we, I was taking those art classes. I'm sure they were trying to pound this whole idea of pigments into us, but until you actually can dig a pigment out of the ground and mix it and make a paint and do something with it, you really don't understand pigments. You know, this, I think, would be an eye-opener for, for a kid. But and we usually take the easy way out. But interesting stuff. Like I said, I'll come back to this again later. I'm going to leave this stuff weather. I'm going to slap some more of this stuff on. Because I think this is going to be uh, what I will be the most impressed with is the combination of the, the ochre and linseed oil mixed with the pine tar and then some turpentine in there to thin the pine tar and it will carry it down into the wood. But good, good stuff. Pigments are interesting stuff. Quite a field. But I'll come back to that at a later date.